Hello, and welcome to Journey to the Cloud, the Impact of AML. Today's webinar is sponsored by Google Cloud and Quantexa and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech Media, and I'm excited to be your moderator for this special event. Now, before we get to today's great content, we do have a few housekeeping items that will help you get the most out of this session. <coughs> Excuse me. First off, we want this to be an informative event for you, so we encourage any questions in the questions box in our webinar control panel. We won't be taking live questions during the moderated panel discussion, but we will pass along any questions that you have to both the Google Cloud and Quantexa teams for follow-up. The Q&A panel is also the place to let us know about any technical issues that you might be experiencing. A browser refresh will fix most audio, video, or slide advancement issues, but if that doesn't work, just let us know in the Q&A and we will provide further technical assistance. Now next, in the handout section of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we're offering several resources. I'd especially like to call your attention to the Google Quantexa trail map, which includes links to all sorts of resources about the joint solution and the partnership. Also in the handout section are links to the Gorilla Guide Book Club, which is Actual Tech Media's uh, collection of great printed resources on technology topics, as well as a link to the ATM Event Center, which has a calendar of upcoming events. So I encourage you to access those resources, especially that trail map uh, now and share them with your friends and colleagues. Third, at the end of this webinar event, we will be awarding a $300 Visa gift card to one lucky registrant. Of course, you must be in attendance during the live event to qualify for that prize. Official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found in the handout section. Just scroll to the bottom and you'll find the prize terms and conditions link there. And with that, let's get to today's fantastic content. And before I introduce our esteemed panelists, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what we're talking about today. The topic AML is anti-money laundering. This is a huge and growing market. I've got a couple of stats up here to illustrate that. The first figure is that this is a, you know, this is a huge market. It's going to be a $5.8 billion market worldwide by 2027. That's according to the research firm Research and Markets. Another firm, Mortar Intelligence, is pro projecting um, a 15.75 compound annual growth rate through 2028. Their estimate for 2028 is also in line with research and markets with just north of a six million dollar or six, I'm sorry, billion dollar uh, market a year later in 2028. And then the final data point that I, I wanted to, to get to today is just to illustrate the scale of this problem. And that's the amount of money that U.S. banks paid in AML fines in 2022. And that amount was 15 billion, again, according to Mordor. So. I just think that uh, that sets us up for this con conversation. And with that context in mind, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenters today. We have Georgina Balkley, who's Director of Financial Services Solutions for EMEA at Google Cloud, and Alexon Bell, who's CPO for AML and FinCrime at Quantexa. So Georgina, Alexon, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's great to be here today for this webinar. Really looking forward to the conversation with Alexan. Likewise. Thank you, Scott. Hi again, Georgina. Good to be here, everyone. Hello. And then, uh, you know, maybe Georgina, you can tell us a little bit more about your background with uh, with Google and financial services. Yeah, really happy to. So, um, so I'm the director for financial services solutions in EMEA. So what that really means is I work with um, our largest customers across Europe, the Middle East and Africa to look at their big strategic challenges of which um, anti-money laundering and managing is definitely one um, and how they can use Google Cloud's platform um, and our solutions and most importantly, our partner solutions, which we're talking about today with Quantexa to solve those challenges. Um, before joining the team at Google Cloud, I spent 23 years in the financial services industry, a number of different institutions. Uh, I started at Goldman Sachs in capital markets and investment banking, and then worked in structured finance uh, and spent 13 years at RBS NatWest uh, in a number of different roles, one of which was as a director of risk and compliance. So this is a topic I've spent a lot of time on um, and also a board member uh, of a number of fintechs. So really looking forward to the conversation today. Excellent. Uh, and, and Alexa, uh, tell us a little bit about your role and your, your background with, with AML and, and financial crime prevention. Delighted to. Thank you, Scott. So Alexon Bell, um, I'm a co-founder of Contexa. I'm also chief product officer here, uh, looking after the kind of AML and anti-financial crime portfolio. Um, my history is um, I've worked in the first generation of those engines uh, before 9-11 happened. 
building generation one transaction monitoring. Um, and I've been kind of working uh, mainly on the software side of the business, uh, developing new ways to tackle and disrupt financial crime. Um, and at Quantexa, I kind of lead those initiatives, uh, working with many global banks and institutions to understand their problems, how technology can solve them in innovative ways, um, and then scaling that out through the partner ecosystem and working with various channels, um, both technology and data um, and kind of traditional consulting uh, to meet the ever evolving needs and challenges of the organizations that uh, we partner with uh, in the industry. Well, thank you both. We are uh, in really expert hands for, for this topic today. Um, Alexa, I wonder if you could s sort of set the stage for us a little bit. You know, how big a problem is is money laundering and, and what are the trends driving the problem? You know, in other words, is it getting better or is it getting worse? Thank you, Scott. So um, money laundering is a really large problem. Um, UNODC, right, uh, Office of Drugs and Crime, put it at anywhere between 2 and 5% of global, global GDP. So that's about $2 trillion annually. Um, the problem is definitely something that has changed from the early days. Um, it is growing in size and complexity. But money laundering as a term sounds reasonably benign. But if you look at it and unpick it, um, actually, it is the cleaning of money from the proceeds of crime. And those crimes are pretty horrible things. They range from, you know, white collar crime and tax evasion all the way through to the nastier things like, you know, child trafficking, modern day slavery, human and organ trafficking, um, all the way to things like, you know, terrorist financing as well. So the prevention, disruption and identification of money laundering activity is really critical in um, making crime not pay. So make sure that the organizations that deal with this uh, don't have an easy ride in, in kind of cleansing that money. Um, it is also something that is increasing in complexity. So the new payment mechanisms, the neo banks, the kind of frictionless drive of uh, supporting the customer is helping legitimate people. But on the flip side, it's also enabling criminals to set up accounts and businesses more easily. Um, and they are leveraging technology, but also the kind of more traditional constructs that are available to them to avoid uh, detection. So a couple of interesting examples is um, a corrupt politician in Africa actually bought a bank and they used that bank to launder their funds. So normally you would think a bank would be safe, but in this example, it was just used as a funnel. And we're seeing a lot of emphasis with the uh, changing sanctions regime globally um, and the kind of you know Belarusian and Russian sanctions where kleptocracy is on the rise um, and the corrupt politicians from not just that um, nation, but other nations have set up multiple companies and they've abused the kind of entrepreneurial nature of some of the kind of more mature Western economies to set up shell companies, safe havens for their money, and they use the, the kind of corporate structures to hide who owns businesses, assets, properties, yachts, um, and they kind of push their money through there. What does that mean? So kind of on the kind of green slide of the sides here, um, it's very complicated for organizations to kind of detect that stuff. Um, the process is very expensive. Organizations spend hundreds of billions of dollars in order to find these um, criminal activities and try and stop them. Um, I feel that they are probably challenged with some of the kind of rules based legacy systems. And we'll talk a bit about that. Um, but those systems, again, how they approach the problem is not really relevant for today, which means that it creates a lot of false positives, a lot of noise that's manually investigated. So there's a lot of cumbersome processes that sit around this that um, could be better deployed in disrupting financial crime. And again, the topic of the conversation, I think we'll kind of unpick that and unpack that to see how innovation is really helping organizations meet the modern day challenge and the kind of evolution of financial crime that we see in the marketplace. Okay, well, that's a that's a sobering picture. Um, uh, next question is, uh, Georgina, another sort of big stage setting question. Uh, this one for you. Uh, Alexon has laid out a number of the challenges here. How can the cloud help address them? Yeah, look, it's a great question. And I think, you know, Alexon did a fantastic job there of just drawing out how broad and complex this topic really is. 
And if you look at where we are today and how we're living, you know, with this constantly increased digitization, and I think we all felt that particularly through COVID, you know, all of our lives became more and more digital. <clears throat> what that's led to, obviously, is, a, is an increase in digital money transfers, so therefore an increased opportunity for uh, an increase in uh, money laundering itself. And we've definitely seen that coming through with higher rates of money laundering with an increased digitized society, effectively. From a technology and sort of predictive analytics perspective, I would say that there's three core trends that, that we are seeing and themes that we believe the industry are, are working really hard to address. So the first of those will come as no surprise, which is data. So data silos uh, and effectively data quality issues. Um, and, you know, I, I was talking to Alexon before the session today, you know, and and what they're seeing working with a lot of their customers is that often the, the money laundering investigating teams, the teams within the risk and compliance and operations functions, whose job it is to do these reviews, are spending, you know, sort of 90 percent of their time outside of that core monitoring in activity that's really focused on gathering data, you know, cleaning data. Um, analyzing counterparties and assimilating a broader and richer set of data. And as we all know, if you have a, a broader set of cleaner data, you're always going to get higher quality analysis and better outputs. And it's that more complete picture that will lead to an escalation of a suspicious activity report. So money laundering really being identified or it being closed and saying, actually, we've done this additional review and this isn't something that we're worried about. But the reality is because of the volume and complexity of the problem, you can only do that operationally for a smaller number um, of these customers. So that's the challenge. The challenge is how do you make this much, much more efficient and make sure that you're focusing on the cases that really need that additional review, the ones that really help you identify the real money laundering. And when you when you think about it from a data analytics perspective, you know, typologies themselves are actually a much more important form of analysis than just money moving quickly. You know, I mean, these are very complicated money transfers we're talking about. When you think about the activities that underpin this, these are very sophisticated criminals that are working in this space. They're often putting in place, you know, shell companies, special purpose vehicles. The money trail itself is, is highly complicated and sophisticated. Um, and difficult to, to follow is the reality. So what we see is that poor data quality um, can be a really limiting factor in terms of that analysis. And in order to make um, the context of solution and, and AI solutions in general more powerful, you need to make sure that you've got good quality data and the, the right set of data to start with. So probably no surprise, the first theme is very data centric. The second theme um, I think it's important to consider is just the accuracy of predictions. So as Alexon touched on, the FSI market at the moment is generally operating with rules based systems. Now, they can be quite brittle in reality because they're operating on incomplete data. So what happens is that it generates thousands of effectively false positive AML alerts. So lots and lots of situations where you're getting um, you know, the requirement to investigate, the requirement to look further, but actually it's a false positive because it's based on rules. It's not based on, you know, what we'll come on to, which is a more sophisticated AI solution. Um, but those alerts naturally, because they need to be investigated, what that means is you have these massive operational teams. And I work with many customers across EMEA who have thousands of people doing this manual work. So that is expensive, probably not the best use of your talent. Um, and it's just quite operationally inefficient, but it is the best the business can do in um, the environment where it's operating uh, with a rules-based system. The other thing I would call out in relation to just accuracy of predictions and the whole system of predictions and getting feedback is that we hear from customers that sometimes they'll put in these suspicious activity reports, but they don't always hear back from law enforcement in terms of saying, actually, you know, we've identified this, we've followed through. So one thing that I do hear from customers, and Alexon, I'm sure will come on to this as well, is just thinking about the ecosystem around anti-money laundering. How do you know, law enforcement, the banks, the banks together help with that data sharing, data information to make sure that the overall ecosystem can get more and more accurate in predictions and better and better in follow up effectively, because these are all activities that everyone wants to reduce and, and you know, take out of society effectively. And then the third big theme that we see is in relation to um, talent and, you know, and cost itself, actually. So while you've got all these really talented people in your risk operations, um, doing lots of this manual work, 
it, you're not enabling them to work on the more complex cases because just the volume of work that's required. And I think the industry is really struggling to, to keep up. So they're looking for new solutions. They're looking for ways that they can use technology to come into their business to both improve the operational efficiency of the system, you know, detect more money laundering, but also create, you know, a motivating environment for their people where they're working on cases that are more complex and actually will lead to true action. So, um, so look, in summary, I think technology helps with, you know, speed, accuracy and cost efficiency here. So lots of ways that we can help um, through this, this particular area. Okay. Yeah. Great themes. And, um, you know, so speaking of the technology, um, you know, listening to you, Georgina, it sounds as if banks are being inundated, inundated with, you know, ML and alerts. So to Alexon, how does, how does, uh, Quantexa help address that? Yeah. Thank you, Scott. So I wanted to take you through, right. If you kind of listen to Georgina and my, appraisals of where we got to we're like well how can we build a system that is you know producing 95 percent false positives with heavily manual processes and i think you know we would look at the problem today and say we probably wouldn't build the system in the same way that we have but anti-money laundering legislations really only came around just before the year 2000 um one thing is definitely um a, a clear trend is that regulations have been consistently ratcheted up over the years, right? Fifth AML directive now in Europe, sixth coming. Um, so I don't think it will stop. But if you look at where we started like 22 years ago to how we got to today, um, you've got a very interesting kind of evolution. Um, in the beginning, we looked at this problem when the regulations first emerged um, and we looked at the how to monitor transactions and people thought, well, We'll take some transactions and customer data, we'll build some rules, people look at the output, they'll have a decision. Um, and again, in that investigation process, um, people would go and research things on the very early internet and um, we would get to a very good result. It transpires that that kind of generation one system produced an awful lot of false positives and not really very meaningful information or output. So the generation two system came in again, same sort of data, but they decided that they would build this kind of profiling engine uh, in between that. So one of the distinguishing features of money laundering is it's not like fraud, where you know, if you have a fraud on your account, you call the bank and you say, I didn't make these transactions. Money launderers don't do that. They're just kind of going through. So they're the perpetrator. Um, and what tends to happen in those scenarios is that um, you want to look for things that are unusual. And so these kind of big profiling engines started to emerge in generation two. Um, but again, like the manual process, slightly less numbers investigators, right? It was better than generation one, uh, but again, still kind of heavily researching, still 90, 95% false positive rates. We then get to generation three. This is the sort of mainstay where we are. So lots of people using machine learning and AI to tune the rules engine but the rules engine really isn't doing much different, right? The profiles are still there, um, but they're using their decisions and outcomes to kind of predict whether this is likely to be a false positive or an escalation. They're trying to streamline and rationalize the process. Um, I'm just going to flip over. So this is generation three again, as we kind of evolve to kind of present state. So we see a lot of organizations now move to this 3A. So we call this 3A because the kind of core engine, right, the rules of machine learning hasn't really changed. But what we're seeing is that um, organizations try and rationalize and put as much efficiency into the process as possible. So RPA here stands for robotic process automation. And essentially here, right, robots are going out and they're researching the corporate registry data. They're bringing in the watch list information, which is the common core set of data that is typically brought in. And that was to kind of Georgina's point, right? Investigators spend 90% of their time outside of the engine because they need to research right, who the counterparty, the non-customer side is. And then we see this link analysis tool being used where, I don't know if anybody remembers Homeland, right? Where she draws all the pins on the wall to connect the people. That's actually what investigators do when they follow the money. They're drawing these on several bits of A3 paper, they're sticking it on the wall to understand who's connected to two, to who, 
and they use link analysis software in order to kind of facilitate that and kind of bring these complex webs of criminal activity um, into an investigation process that they can understand. Um, so how has this changing or how is this changing now? Um, and it's changing now, as you can see, we're bringing the third party data from an investigation process to be an input into the analytical engine. The link analysis that is used in investigation is, is being created as network analysis. So if you investigate in networks for complex cases, one of the best ways to find that is to suck the intelligence out of those complex investigators and put that into the analytical process as an input. Um, and here you can see that we've changed the rules engines into models. Machine learning does play a big part, but essentially now all the data that used to be researched manually for a very small number of alerts is used wholesale as an input into the engine right for detection. Um, and why can we do this? So if you go back to the first generation slides, right, in the year 2000, I can't remember, right, I think the, the fastest processor was 800 megahertz, right, of one CPU. Whereas today in your phone, you've got 5.5 gigahertz and a terabyte of data in 2000 was, a, was like a bookshelf of disks. And now it's a tiny little thing you can plug into your card. Uh, into your phone. So actually compute has been um, a huge benefit to organizations. You can do more calculations, um, but the shift between generation three and generation four, as Georgina said, it's the data. I can do more calculations, but actually in generation three, I'm just doing calculations on the same set of data. In generation four, I'm doing calculations on an order of magnitude, more fields of information. Um, and as you can see, if you've got all of this input, you can fix your data once. And if you look at your customers, their counterparties, the networks can be things like legal hierarchies. That data can be used for multiple things. And we see know your customer being much more critical and transaction monitoring not sitting side by side with it, but actually forming a key component of knowing your customer. And that's really important that now organizations can truly understand and manage the risk of their customer. And transaction monitoring is not a separate thing. It's starting to merge together, which I think is kind of where the regulations wanted that to go in the first place. Um, I suppose the last point that I've got here is that if you look at this, you could actually draw a line between the customers, counterparties and networks, right? That's your data layer. And then on top of that, you've got your machine learning and your models. And what we see is a, a very much a translation of the transaction monitoring systems of old being tightly integrated in a vertical stack to moving to more horizontal capabilities that solve multiple problems. You know, Google AI is very flexible, right? It doesn't just solve AML issues, it can solve multiple problems. And that ability to learn from different disciplines and different sectors in the AI engine space, coupled with a technology that can build and understand and enrich data better, is actually a really superb way of approaching the problem. So a much more horizontal kind of movement um, and using your data once and fixing it once and using it multiple times. So that's kind of how Quantex is helping with the problem and also working in partnership with Google really well because we provide better data, they've got really smart AI and together right, we can solve the problem in a different way. Okay. Um, and Georgina, how does Google Cloud fit in, into this solution? What, what do you guys do there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Alexa has done a brilliant job of describing the evolution of um, AML technology effectively. And, you know, just listening to him, it really does firstly resonate having worked in this space for so long, but also really, I think, just bring to life the complexity of the data graph that companies are working through, right, through this solution. And, um, and really, when you're working with that volume of data, you know, in some instances for a large institution, you know, but petabytes of data on their system. Right. You know, you want to be working on a platform that can give you, you know, a safe, secure, scalable, flexible environment. And there's many reasons that customers work with Google Cloud, um, you know, best in class security, 
uh, which is a, a core build by design component of our software. Um, but actually also, you know, data is a core tenant of Alphabet as a company, but very much Google Cloud. So, you know, I think we're very well known for our, um, our focus on data, we're industry leader in AI and ML. And what that gives you is speed, accuracy, flexibility in terms of the platform scaling up and down and dependent on customer needs. And it's really that compute power. And when I talk to customers, that's frequently what they say to me. You know, one of the reasons I love working, you know, with the Google Cloud platform is just the sheer compute power that you can bring to solutions like the Quantex AML solution. Um, I've included a couple of other things here. Um, sustainability is very close to my heart. I do a lot of work in sustainability, and that is a very important factor for a lot of our customers. Um, we run 100% on renewable energy. That's something that, that I think is is uh, an important factor in what we offer to the market and actually also the one Google offering. So often customers work with Google Cloud and they might not just work with the cloud aspect of Google, they might work with other product areas as well. But I mean, in terms of, of this specific solution and you know what we're bringing along with Contexa, I like this visual, just thinking about the different components and how we fit together. Um, you know, as I say, we offer a very flexible and high performing data analytics capability. It is industry leading, something we're extremely proud of. And that's provided within robust, scalable infrastructure, right? You know, it's, um, it's something that really enables scaling in very large data quantities. And it's something that is perfectly matched to a solution like this. You know, Contexa leverages a number of our different product areas. I won't go into all the details around them, but um, you know, it enables very high performance on the solution. Um, and really what we're trying to do here, which is enable very fast, flexible data analysis so that you can dynamically detect money laundering, right? You're not looking at a rules-based system here. You're looking at something that operates, you know, dynamically across multiple different data sets, pulling that together. Um, and using technology to really reduce financial crime, which is it's very powerful. And um, I think the Quantexa solution is, is really exciting within the market. Um, we work on a number of different customers together. And I think this really has the, the potential to, you know, um, make a real change in the market. And we see it with, with some customers already and, and look forward to, to helping more customers across the market, you know, drive this down, reduce those manual reviews that we've talked about, improve operational efficiency, um, and really free up people to work on the more complicated cases. That's what will really drive results here. And I think it's a very good partnership between the Quantexa solution and the power of the Google platform. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. And Alexa, I think you've got a couple more slides here showing us how um, you know, next generation uh, AML works with, uh, with Quantexa. So I wonder if you could take us through those. Sure, love to. Um, so I think this slide is really um, talking about how do people and how do systems work, right? So it's it's nice to, to talk about it, but if I can visually show you how detection might work, how an investigator looks at the problem, and then how a combination of software uh, capabilities come together to replicate that, um, it can show you where we've gone from generation three to generation four and the difference it can make. So in this example here, right, you have a, a transaction between um, a customer on the left and a counterparty uh, for a sum of money. Um, and then if this was alerted for any number of reasons, maybe it's high value or it's a high risk jurisdiction or rapid movement or something like that, um, it doesn't really describe the crime, right, or the issue with it. It's just something that's a bit anomalous or meets a particular pattern. The investigator would look at this, and again, most of their systems would pull the customer data in, right, and they'd be able to look at it. But then they would go and look outside um, and try and piece together who the counterparty was. So in this example, we've got corporate registry information. So that would tell you a bit of that about the counterparty on the right hand side. And underneath, it would also help to validate uh, the credentials that you've got for the business that's your customer. Um, so in this example here, the investigator might look at it and go, okay, maybe my investigation is done. And this is maybe one of the problems with the kind of current process, which is very checklist orientated. However, some of the better investigators may also further research this and understand that actually there's a connection between the customer and the counterparty. And this could be a circular flow of money um, rather than just a normal business transaction. 
And then over the top of that, you can bring in your watch list records. Again, this is very relevant in the current sanctions regime. Maybe Sergey here is uh, connected to you know the Russian political system in some uh, regards. And again, these would be manual steps the investigator would have to conduct. And actually, it's probably better that a computer system does this systematically. And that's really the difference between the current modern engines and the kind of previous generation is that the previous generation has this picture, whereas the modern generation completes this. It builds this continuously in the background all the time. And it's really using to using this to focus in on the key bits of criminality. And what we see when these techniques are applied is that false positives can drop by 75%. We can remove most of the noise through building this picture and really help people to focus on the real um, issues that um, are facing them and basically bring the picture to life and detect as you would investigate. Well, yeah, it's 75% drop in, in false positives is, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a powerful, uh, it's a powerful figure. Um, so, you know, looking at these examples, one aspect which is going to be front of mind for customers will be security. And Georgina, what does Google Cloud do to help assure customers that the cloud is safer? Yeah, look, and it's a great question. I think it is absolutely front of mind for all customers with cloud, but particularly in financial services, you know, which is an industry that deals with PII data and is something that is, you know, very thoughtful about its data flows. I mean, Google Cloud, we have multiple levels of encryption plus you know, physical and logical security, and that goes right across our global data centers to prevent any kind of unauthorized access to customers' data. Um, our hardware is also optimized for security. So um, we carefully source and assemble our products and we use Titan security uh, keys as well. And what that enables is for encryption keys at the highest level for our customers. And customers have the ability to hold those encryption keys um, themselves. They can hold them off-site in their own property or they can hold them with a third party. So the customers are given you know, additional levels of security at all points in the process. Also within the centers themselves, there's comprehensive security right through the stack, you know, um, spanning uh, who provide um, hypervisors and operating systems, like all the way through to data messaging and the application layers itself. So I suppose the core message is that, you know, encryption is um, in place and in terms of the data itself, it's encrypted at rest in transit, but also in use. So at all stages, the data is is under encryption. And as I said before, the way that we even design our the, the cloud and, and our systems is, is very much security by design. Um, and Google itself actually has a number of different teams that work on this, you know, continually, um, just to, to make sure it's very much front of mind. And I, I work with financial services customers, I say, every single day. And I think particularly when you're talking about PII data, which, are, you know, financial service customers are putting onto the cloud right now, it's really important that uh, they have comfort that the security level around it is at the, exactly the right level for them. Because these companies are, you know, um, they have three level, three lines of defense, they're independently audited, they're highly regulated. And security is a really, really core aspect of our offering and something that we take incredibly seriously at Google Cloud. Okay, excellent. Um, Let's shift gears a little bit and, and talk about some of the recommendations for easier transitions for customers. Uh, Alexon, what do you commonly advise uh, customers to do? Um, yeah, I think for me, it's always about being pragmatic. Um, you know, you're never going to have the perfect data environment. Um, you're never going to be fully ready. So start with a project that you've got. Use the data that's in front of you. Um, and basically just move forward. I think also just be cognizant that um, this is likely to be a marathon and not a sprint. Um, so hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, I think, you know, design for this now, but move your applications over um, as you can through the process. And I think what I've been most delighted to see is that as they start to build new monitoring things, they are having a cloud first strategy, like where it meets their security um, envelope. So again, build your new platforms to be cloud ready, put the data up there that you feel comfortable with that can be shared and architect that in a way that allows you to start and incrementally build. Cloud's not going to go away. It can help tremendously with the scalable compute. It's very cost effective, secure, 
Um, but again, it must meet and you must feel comfortable, but on your journey, right? Just start with something um, and then grow. Okay, great advice. Uh, Georgina, same question to you. What are, what are your top recommendations for customers? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, look, I mean, we put down Think to Innovate here. And, you know, one of the reasons I joined Google Cloud is because I just see the enormous potential for cloud and AI technology to evolve and revolutionize financial services for the benefit of customers, right? I really see that. And I, um, I'm as excited about it as I was the first day I joined. So I think that there's huge potential um, for financial services customers to use cloud and AI technology to address all kinds of different, really important strategic challenges. And one that is as data rich and data intense as AML, I think is, is a natural area that, you know, a solution like Quantexas um, can really solve and make a, a step change for a financial services company. So I would say, think innovatively, you know, embrace the opportunity to revolutionize a business challenge with cloud and AI. And also, you know, as I said at the start, you know, do look at, at out of the box solutions. That's what this is for you. This is what Contexa is offering you. You know, there is a challenge right now with people having skills gaps and, and talent gaps and having all the, the people they need to build their own AI teams, their own engineering teams. Um, and this solution and this offering here is, is presenting um, financial services customers with an out of the box solution. You know, it's easier. Uh, than building your own if, if you're having a sort of skills gap within your company and the engineering teams which many banks are um and it will it will you know revolutionize the, the business and help you in an area that is is really challenging and as we said at the start of the call is growing so i would say you know be innovative and you know take the time to go through the trail map that we've, we've put in here and look at the solution and see if this could be a great out-of-the-box solution to fit into your company great well, it's been a really interesting conversation and it's moved really quickly, but we're, we're to the sort of the, the closing thoughts period of it. So, um, you know, I, I wonder if you guys can each offer a few just like closing thoughts or, or takeaways uh, or next steps. And Georgina, maybe I can ask you to go first and then uh, Alexan, you can follow on. Yeah, very happy to. And I suppose what I would say firstly is, you know, we're talking today about specifically about transaction monitoring, but actually, as Alexon touched on earlier, this is a whole area around, you know, customer due diligence, KYC, and there's a whole suite of offerings that Quantexa has in this particular area for risk. Um, it's very, very important and a core tenant of a financial services company to be investing and developing in this area to, to advance their business. But as we've talked about, this is also a solution that offers operational efficiency. So this is a solution that if deployed, enables you to repivot people away from more manual tasks into you know, deeper analysis of complex cases. And what the cloud brings to that is speed and you know, predictive analytical capabilities driven by the compute power of Google Cloud, which is a, you know, a really market leading capability. Um, and I suppose my last thought would just be you know, when you listen to the business case for this at the top of the call in terms of what this activity is funding, it's a very purposeful area to work in. You know, it's a really important purpose-led activity for the benefit of society and something that I think this technology can really help, you know, um, some of the most challenging parts of society, uh, which is a very worthwhile thing to do. Yeah, and just to add to that, Jordan, I think that was, that was brilliant. I think for me also, right, as a technologist i look at this and i go one i want to disrupt financial crime right that's, that's i've been doing and wanting to do this but actually like you yeah. say there's more to this and i think it comes back to the fundamentals of if you can fix your data and you can have great data and you can truly know your customer and assemble all of that data and you move from just knowing to understanding your customer yeah. that doesn't just help you with aml right from an aml risk perspective but if you know who your customer is transacting with, what size are those businesses and who they are connected to, it does inform your AML risk, but actually it provides a fabulous foundation to feed downstream information into your credit risk department, your relationship managers to service them better. Um, and I think that for me is the, the next evolution, right? If you are able to reuse your data across the enterprise, scale that out, allow AI to learn right from your current processes, right? And you can feed back. It mitigates your risk. You can capture the better customers um, and you can do that at a faster cycle. So you can reduce your time to value 
and, and you can manage the bumps in the process. So I think now's a really exciting time to be starting on this journey. Um, and again, right, new things are happening. So it's truly uh, an innovative area, right, to be working on. So, but thank you very much. And thanks, Scott, and thanks, Regina. Yeah, thank you. Very exciting uh, conversation. And I do want to call everybody's attention to a couple of things on, on, this, uh, on this slide here. There's a, a link to a video. There's also a learn more about Quantexa and Google Cloud for banking. Um, the, uh, the trail map resource is also in your handout section, uh, which will be uh, available after this, this slide is over. Um, but uh, so I do just want to um, thank you, uh, Alexon and Georgina, for, for a great conversation. Really appreciate you guys coming on and, uh, and bringing us up to speed on this fascinating topic. No, thank you very much for the opportunity to, yeah. to meet with the group today. And likewise, thank you, everyone. All right. And we do have one final piece of business. It's the Visa Gar card uh, prize drawing. And the winner of the $300 card today is David Huber from Georgia. So congratulations to David. We'll be in touch to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of the actual tech media team, I want to thank Google Cloud and Quantexa for making this event possible. And thanks, as always, for attending. That concludes today's event. Have a fantastic rest of your day.